Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar with teddybaldassar.com. In this video, we're looking at two new watches or fairly new watches from Accutron that really, I would say, represent the DNA of the brand without any pun here, as we're looking at the space view as well as the DNA looking at these two watches. So in this video, and you're familiar, if you're not familiar with this channel, I should say, this is where we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldasar.com as a full authorized dealer. So in this video, we'll look at these two new watches, explain kind of the complexity of both of them as they are a bit of kind of a different execution compared to what you're gonna see in the market. So we'll go over all those details. In addition, if you have any further questions, check out the link in the description to the product page where you can also purchase the watch as well as actually book some time with one of our dedicated watch specialists if you have any further questions before purchasing. But guys, let's jump into the video and take a closer look at these two Two watches. So to set the stage before looking at these watches today, I think we have to look back at really the origins of Accutron. So in 1960, the Bulova watch company introduced Accutron, a new brand that featured revolutionary patented technology that relied on an electrical current to power their watches rather than the traditional mechanical movements. During the 1950s, the post-war watch industry started to focus on new advanced technologies with a singular focus accuracy. A couple different companies during this decade started researching and prototyping electronic movements, but it was Accutron who saw the most success with their caliber 214, which was pioneered by a Bulova engineer named Max Hetzel. Now the Accutron caliber 214 utilized their famous tuning fork and transistor combination along with just 12 moving parts to create timekeeping abilities far more accurate than any mechanical watch could do by creating a current that operated at a blistering 360 hertz. Accutron had indeed produced a technological breakthrough that would ultimately translate into tremendous commercial success throughout the 1960s, led in large part by the Accutron Space View, which to this day remains a cult classic. The Space View name is derived by having an open work dial, allowing the wearer to see the tuning fork in action from the front of the watch. Throughout the years, Accutron has released several different reissues, including back in 2010 when they reissued the Space View 214 as a limited edition series of 1,000 pieces for the movement's 50 year anniversary. But in 2020, it happened again with the 60 year anniversary and Accutron, which is now completely independent of Bulova, has launched two new commemorative pieces, the Space View 2020 and the Space View DNA. With these new models, Accutron didn't simply just recycle their caliber 214, but instead the company introduced yet another potentially groundbreaking movement technology, which converts the motion of your arm into electric static power. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at both of these two new models side by side and talk about their similarities, their differences, which one might be the better choice for you, and then ultimately where these ones sit in terms of the industry. So first let's jump in and take a look at each watch and highlight some of the most obvious features. Now first, both of these pieces are gonna be quite substantial when you're talking about size. Now the Space View 2020 is gonna come in with a 43 and a half millimeter case and the Space View DNA at 45 millimeters. Now where it gets a little bit more difficult is just the overall case architecture. When it comes to the Space View 2020, you're getting more traditional lugs in a format that feels a bit more familiar and is gonna wear smaller of the two at a lug to lug distance of 49.5 millimeters. Still wearing, I would say, close to that of a 42, 43 millimeter case but with that dial effect, it is going to create a pretty large visual presence. When it comes to the DNA, there's really no other way to describe the case shape other than futuristic in its architecture. It has more of an aerodynamic type of approach, curved lines, non-traditional lugs that lead right into that rubber strap that is going to be affixed to the watch. The thickness on the Space View DNA is just gonna be slightly thinner, but ultimately it's not gonna be that much of a noticeable feature. So given the case dimensions and the fact that as we get into this dial and its approach with its dome crystal and very thin non-existing bezel, you are getting an effect that is gonna make these watches appear large on the wrist because quite frankly, they are large watches. When having them strapped on, one noticeable feature though is going to be that they are rather light for their size. Given the internal components of these watches, it's going to make them wear a little bit lighter than their mechanical counterparts. So breaking down each case a little bit more, highlighting the differences between each model, starting with the lugs, which we alluded to at the beginning of this video, are gonna be one of the major design differences between these two references. Accutron supplied the case of the Space View 2020 with traditional lugs designed with a dramatic downward sloping angle that helps compact the lug to lug distance under 50 millimeters and keeps the strap attached close to the wrist for improved comfortability. Each surface to the lugs is highly polished and then there is a transition into a nicer vertical brushing finish along the mid case. Between the lugs of the Space View 2020 sits a soft padded genuine leather strap, also coming with a butterfly deployant clasp. On the Space View DNA, you will only find brush finishing throughout the mid case and along the hooded lugs. 
The case itself is silver color as you'd expect to see with 316L stainless steel, while a section of the lugs is a darker color which Accutron calls gray steel providing a little bit of visual contrast. Now the Spaceview DNA features this integrated rubber strap and butterfly deployant with a two button release. The rubber strap is soft and flexible, albeit a bit long, and does conform to the wrist well given the angle, providing a snug, secure fit. Overall, the design of the case for the Spaceview DNAs is a bit more sleeker, it's futuristic than that of the Spaceview 2020, to simply put it. Between the two models, I generally give the wearability comfort edge to that of the Spaceview 2020 over the DNA, and it does have that shorter lug-to-lug -lug distance, as well as the strap that I think does provide a bit more of a comfortable fit overall, and is a bit more conventional and expected, so it doesn't create this uh, new dynamic for you when you put this watch on the wrist. Two other noticeable differences between the cases are the size and the design of the fixed bezels, as well as the difference in the crowns. Now, the polished bezel on the Spaceview 2020 is more substantial than that of the Spaceview DNA, which has a similarly styled bezel, but thinner and visually, it seems to blend in a little bit more with the case. The Spaceview 2020's bezel size also gives the watch a more traditional overall look and doesn't necessarily take away from the other visual aspects of the watch, especially where it counts on the dial. Now the final case difference between each model is going to be the crown. The Spaceview DNA has a stylized push-pull crown adorned with a green enamel cap, as well as that iconic tuning fork logo at the center. A more slightly traditional push-pull crown can be found in the Spaceview 2020, which lacks the green cap, but also keeps the tuning fork logo. Both models have water-resistant capabilities up to 50 meters, but these aren't made to be exposed to water like traditional sports watches, so it probably is safer to keep them away from any serious water activities. But now that we've covered the differences in case aesthetics, let's segue into how these watches actually operate, which is identical. There are no added features or complications to one over the other. In order to describe the functionality and technologies, we have to first look at the dials to explain what is going on here. Starting with the lower half of the dial, you will find two gold and silver colored wheel-like apertures that spin around. These are called electrostatic generators and they act a lot like that of an oscillating rotor in a mechanical watch in that they convert your everyday movement into energy. That energy here though is then gonna be transmitted to the electrostatic combine motor which is located within the aperture at the 10 o'clock. Now this motor powers the hand that gives the second hand that very fluid sweeping motion. So when looking at the dial, those are the major visible components that operate the watch. In addition, there's also a step motor powering the hour and minute hands. So a dedicated motor to create those two isolated independent movements, one for the second hand and the other one for those hour and minute hands. Now the crowns are only used to adjust the time. So the crowns do not wind the movement up. That's only done with the motion of your arm or by moving the watch back and forth with your hand to spin the rotors inside of those generators. Now, in addition to generating power though, in this new and interesting way, this movement also features a fascinating two-part power saving system to conserve stored energy. When the watch is not moving for longer than five minutes, the second hand will stop, but the hour and the minute hand will continue to track the time. And this is gonna to refer to their power save function. Now, the nature of this feature is to optimize the watch's power supply over an extended period of time. So in addition to that short-term power save function, there's also a second longer term energy saving feature called the energy conserving mode. In this mode, if the watch has not been moved for more than 10 days, it will stop all the hands no longer tracking the time in order to save the remaining stored power. You can manually set this mode by pulling the crown out and after about an hour with the crown being pulled out all the way, the movement will enter the energy conserving mode. To develop this movement technology, it took five years of research and development. So this has been a long project for Accutron and the Citizen Watch Group to make this happen. This was also being done with an all hands on type of approach from the help of Miyota, which is a citizen watch group movement provider. So a lot of things being done here and no question, very interesting movements that are using a lot of high tech specifications. So we'll talk a little bit more about these movements in a bit and more of the specifications around them, but I wanna start getting into what is actually appearing on the dial here. Now, like similar watches from the Spaceview to style family, you're going to have an open work dial where we find a combination of dark gunmetal gray finish surfaces for that dial plate, as well as some of the applied skeletonized elements. For the Spaceview 2020, you're seeing more of that Accutron green playing out mostly on the dial with some, of course, gray silver tone elements. And then when you're looking at the DNA, it's gonna lean a bit more into that futuristic gray charcoal color that it can be seen throughout the dial. Contrasting the darker surfaces are three silver fixed bridges which sit atop the two generators 
and the motor apertures. If you look closely at the bridges that sit above the motor aperture, there is a slightly different design between the two models. The DNA's bridge isn't a completed circle with one of the arcs between the arms missing, unlike that of the 2020's bridge. The DNA's generator bridges feature slimmer arms as well as a slightly sharper, straighter shape than those of the 2020 model. Some of the more traditional elements you'll find on both of the dials are the chapter rings that sit along the edge of the dial, sloping along the same angle as the dome crystal, giving additional depth and detail to the front of the watch. Now the green chapter ring on the DNA adorns applied rectangular polish hour markers containing a good amount of superluminova within. With the 2020, you get a clear chapter ring with those particular plots which are painted and not applied. And then one other differentiating factor is going to be the handset. Similar in terms of their execution, one's gonna be full stainless steel, the other one's going to be, of course, white tips when it comes to the space view, and you're also getting an orange tip retro style second hand that's gonna cast along the outside of the dial compared to the white second hand on the DNA. Now, outside of the, of course, movement technology being the number one star of the show, it cannot be dismissed how well finished these watches are when you're talking about the cases, but mostly when it comes to what is appearing on this, I guess, open work style dial. All of the bridges, the screws, any other elements on the front of this watch are gonna have high polished edges. And you could tell immediately when looking at these watches up close that there were no corners cut when it came to the finishing of these. So flipping both of these watches over, we do have solid case backs that cover the impressive Miyota produced NS30Y8A electrostatic movement, which for the most part is going to be seen on the front of watch, which you already got to. Now, in terms of just some additional points about this movement, you talk about the power conservation of this movement, uh, but it will accumulate those energy stored when you are wearing this watch regularly. So just kind of keep that in mind. Also, from an accuracy standpoint, you're talking about plus or minus five seconds a month. So this goes to show Accutron and Bulova's great attention to detail when it comes to the world of accuracy and precision. One other final point is after two years of inactivity, Activity. So if you don't wear this watch for two years, you will have to replace the capacitor on this watch. But I will say, if you own a watch and you don't wear it once every two years, I'd question why you even have to own the watch to begin with. This watch also comes with a five-year warranty backed by Accutron, so good peace of mind there when you are dealing with these high-tech movements. All right, so now to look at both the Accutron Space View and the DNA, some final points of consideration. Now let's get the obvious things out of the way. These are not going to be for everybody when it comes to size, the look, as well as the price. If those are barriers for you when looking at these watches, there's gonna be no way that these are going to convince you otherwise. But let's talk about what these things bring to the table. When you're talking about the technology in these movements, there's truly nothing else like this from a contemporary perspective. This is also, I think, a great way to honor the Accutron history without being a complete rehash in the process. When it comes to the finishing of these two, they are very, very good for the price category. Also, these are gonna be a bit retro in terms of their approach. The DNA is gonna be a bit more futuristic. I keep using that term throughout, but it's probably the best way to describe it. From a wearability standpoint, the Space View 2020 is going to be the better option for those that are on the fence about whether or not they can pull these off. That traditional lug architecture, as well as a smaller case format in general, is going to offer a more compact wearing experience. So who are these watches for? Definitely for a hardcore enthusiast without question, but someone who appreciates the high technical specifications of these watches and the movements that are being constructed within. Also the classic Space View design DNA and wanting to really own that and have a piece of that from a modern perspective. That's really what these watches are all about. But I think what the most encouraging thing here for Accutron is a very nice welcome back to their own independent state within the Citizen Watch Group. And if this is their first kind of splash on the scene with what they're doing with the Space View technology, I can't wait to see what's next. All right, guys, well, thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Also, if you're in the market for any watch covered on this channel, we are a full authorized dealer of over 30 brands. All the watches covered on this channel, we are a seller of, so definitely check that out, teddyballstar.com. Quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, also offer price match, so if you see one of our watches for cheaper at another authorized dealer, fill out the form on the website and we'll be in touch with you. And then also, nine out of every $10 that we generate goes right back into the content we're creating here, as well as on our main channel, of course. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.